in their immediate reactions, Western politicians, including President Obama, visibly struggled to find the right terms to describe what actually happened in the skies. We heard words like uh, a mistake, an incident, but the Russian interpretation very quickly moved to the belief that this was a premeditated act on the part of the Turks. What's your take on that? What was the intent of that action, and did that intent go beyond border control? Well, I think there's two parts uh, to that. Number one, that's, uh, that airspace over there is controlled and monitored uh, not only by the Turks, but the Americans in Adana, Turkey, uh, also by uh, the Syrians and the Russians based out of uh, uh, Latakia and uh, Tartus uh, and Damascus. And then you have the air control center uh, run out of uh, Iraq and uh, even up in Kurdistan. So that airspace is closely monitored. And so when a, when a jet or any kind of a, a military aircraft would enter it, there would be some kind of identification uh, as that aircraft's entering that airspace. So that's why I think uh, t the Turks knew exactly what was going on. Uh, and again, in that tight airspace, I think they took action to send a signal uh, to Russia that uh, Turkey uh, is a dominant power there and wants to remain so. Mm -hmm. Well, um, it's not a secret that the uh, relationship between Russia and Turkey, and more specifically between Erdogan and Putin, have been uh, rather strained as of late, even though I think they, they tried and succeeded in maintaining some civility up until this point. But what I think is much less publicized is the difficulties, the disagreements that exist between Ankara and Washington, more specifically with, uh, you know, on the issue of the Kurds, on the issue of Turkish support for radicals of all stripes. Uh, how big of a liability is Turkey for NATO and uh, its collective security obligations? Well, I, I think it's a big uh, and an important issue, and I think NATO, uh, if they have any resolve, uh, they would oust Turkey uh, out of NATO.